Bud Collier was an American radio actor and announcer and game show host who became one of the nation's first major television game show stars. He is best remembered for his work as the first host of the TV game shows Beat the Clock and To Tell the Truth, but he was also famous in the roles of Clark Kent, Superman on radio and in animated cartoons, initially in theatrical short subjects and later on television. He also recorded a number of long-playing 33 and a third RPM record albums for children. Some of these had Bible stories, in keeping with his strong connections with his church and deep spirituality. Early life and career Collier was born in Manhattan to Clayton Johnson Hermans and Caroline Collier. He originally sought a career in law, attending Williams College, where he was a member of Psi Upsilon Fraternity, and Fordham University Law School. Although he became a law clerk after his graduation, making as much in a month on radio as he did in a year of clerking convinced him to make broadcasting his career. He changed his surname, and by 1940 he had become a familiar voice on all three major radio networks. He held starring or major supporting roles in The Man I Married, Kate Hopkins, Angel of Mercy, Pretty Kitty Kelly, Terry and the Pirates, Renfrew of the Mounted, and Abby's Irish Rose. He also was the announcer for a number of radio soap operas, including The Guiding Light and The Goldbergs. Superman Collier's best-remembered radio starring role began in early 1940 in The Adventures of Superman on the Mutual Broadcasting System a role he also performed in the subsequent Superman cartoons. Collier supplied the voices of both Superman and his alter ego Clark Kent, opposite radio actress Joan Alexander as Lois Lane. Every Superman episode featured a scene in which Clark Kent changed into his Superman costume, an effect which Collier conveyed by shifting voices while speaking the phrase, this is a job for Superman, his voice always dropping when becoming Superman. Originally, Clark Kent and Superman were going to be played by two different actors. It was Collier's ability to voice Clark Kent as a tenor and switch to bass to voice Superman that got him the role. It also saved the producers the cost of two actors. Game show hosting Collier got his first helping of game shows when he co-hosted ABC's Break the Bank with future Miss America pageant mainstay Burt Parks, and when he was picked to host the radio original of the Mark Goodson-Bill Todman team's first game, Winner Take All. Collier went on to host the television versions of both shows. Beat the Clock in 1950 Bud Collier got the job which genuinely made him a household name. Beat the Clock a game show that pitted couples against the clock in a race to perform silly tasks, which were called, problems, but could with more accuracy be called, stunts. The grand prizes for these usually came in terms of cash or home appliances. Collier hosted the show for 11 years, and he also co-produced it for part of its run. Collier did an excellent job keeping the show fast-paced, he spoke quickly and brightly, and was often moving around the stage as much as the contestants. Frequently Collier would interrupt a stunt to offer helpful advice, or demonstrate a more efficient way to win the game. One of Collier's trademarks on the show was securing his long-tube stage microphone in his armpit. He also typically wore bow ties, and liked to point out when contestants were bow tie guys, like himself, though initially, through the mid-1950s, he wore straight, four-in-hand, neckties most weeks. He enjoyed meeting families of contestants, and was fond of children. He would always ask about contestants' children, and sometimes would compare the number and sexes with that of his own family. When children were brought on stage with their parents, he would take time to talk to each of them and ask them what they wanted to be when they grew up, in a manner reminiscent of his contemporary, Art Linkletter. At the height of the show's popularity, an installment of The Honeymooners featured blustery Ralph Cramden and scatterbrained Ed Norton appearing on and playing Beat the Clock. Unlike the show's familiar parody of the $64,000 question, Gleason's Beat the Clock episode used the actual show and set, complete with the familiar large 60-second clock emblazoned with sponsor Sylvania's logo, and ending with Collier and his famous sign-off. Next time maybe your time to beat the clock. To tell the truth in 1956, Collier became equally, if not more, familiar as the host of a new Goodson Todman production, To Tell the Truth, on CBS. This panel show featured four celebrities questioning three challengers all claiming to be the same person. Collier would read an affidavit from the actual contestant, and then monitor the panel's cross-examination. Because the show depended on conversation instead of physical stunts, Collier's demeanor on To Tell the Truth was much calmer and more avuncular than his fever pitch performances on Beat the Clock. After the celebrities voted for their choices, Collier intoned the famous phrase, Will the real John Doe, please, stand up? Collier always employed pauses to build the suspense. Sometimes one or both imposters would pretend to stand up before the real contestant did, bringing a moment of last-minute suspense as well as a chuckle from Collier. The sequence provided an especially riotous moment in 1962, when Collier purred, with a particularly pronounced twinkle, Will the real Bob Miller, please, stand up? Two Bob Millers, both pitchers for the newborn New York Mets, rose in response. The show became popular enough to sustain a weekday version as well as a weekly evening version, and Collier presided over both concurrently. Among the celebrities who served as to tell the truth panelists during the 14-year run of the show were Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, Kitty Carlisle, Donna Michi, Peter Lind Hayes, Johnny Carson, Ralph Bellamy, Polly Bergen, Mimi Benzel, 
Sally Ann Howes, High Gardner, Phyllis Newman, and Robert Q. Lewis. Other work Collier's other game show hosting included the Dumont game show's Talent Jackpot and On Your Way, the game show Feather Your Nest, and the ABC game number Please in 1961, which replaced Beat the Clock on the Monday after the final ABC episode. On September 24, 1957, Collier was among the guests on To Tell the Truth panelist Polly Bergen's premiere episode of her short-lived NBC comedy, variety show, The Polly Bergen Show. The Superman Connection in 1966, Collier reprised his role as the voice of Superman in the Filmation animated television series The New Adventures of Superman, reuniting him with radio vis a vis Joan Alexander. Politics During his 1950s heyday with Beat the Clock and To Tell the Truth, he was a leader in an overtly anti-communist faction of the New York chapter of the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. That faction supported such publications as Red Channels and interest groups that shared the author's politics, groups like Aware, Inc. Purporting to screen broadcast performers for actual or alleged communist ties, pressuring networks and advertisers to shun them under threat of boycott. An opposing faction, led by CBS radio personality John Henry Falk and Orson Bean, defeated Collier's faction in an election to run the New York Union. Spirituality and charity religion and charitable work were very important to Bud Collier, and he was always particularly pleased to hear contestants say that they considered donating portions of their winnings to the church, or that they planned to donate to charities. He would often include, God bless you, in his parting words to contestants. He was always particularly happy to have a contestant that was a minister on the show and would ask about his congregation. On Beat the Clock, he often delivered public service messages about such charitable causes as the March of Dimes and other drives for research of diseases. Collier taught a Sunday school class at his Presbyterian church in Connecticut for more than 35 years and spent some of his off time as a caretaker at his church. According to one story, a parishioner called the church one Sunday during a particularly heavy snowstorm to inquire if the church would have services that day. Oh yes, Collier replied, tongue-in-cheek, God and I are here. Collier was known to have contributed to various Christian religious works, including authoring at least one religious book and making a recording of the New Testament of the Good News Bible. He wrote two inspirational books, Thou Shalt Not Fear and With the Whole Heart. Death When to Tell the Truth was planned to be revived for syndication, producers Mark Goodson and Bill Todman wanted Collier to once again host the show. Collier declined, citing poor health. When Goodson and Todman called Gary Moore about the job, he immediately called Collier, who told Moore that, I am just not up to it. Collier died at age 61 from a circulatory ailment in Greenwich, Connecticut, on the same day the new To Tell the Truth premiered in daytime syndication. He was survived by his wife, Marion Shockley. Bud Collier is interred at Putnam Cemetery in Greenwich. In 1985, he was posthumously named as one of the honorees by DC Comics in the company's 50th anniversary publication 50 Who Made DC Great. Family Collier was the brother of film actress June Collier. He married Heloise Law Green in 1936. In 1947, he married 1930s movie actress Marion Shockley. He had two daughters, Cynthia and Pat, and a son, Michael, who died in 2004. In January 1957, his son Mike appeared as a challenger on To Tell the Truth, under the name of Pat Ritsuto.